What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I just wanted to take you on a tour of my garden, give you a quarterly update. It's currently the middle of October and it's fall and the days are getting shorter, but everything's still going really good back here. It's growing and thriving. Some stuff has slowed down and other is continuing to grow pretty good and some stuff is just kicking butt. So I just wanted to show you, so let's go. Let's do it. So it's currently the afternoon and everything's already getting shaded out and the sun's starting to go down, but it still gets pretty good amount of sun during the morning and noon hours. So some of the stuff that doesn't get that much sun has slowed down. Some of the other stuff still gets plenty of sun to still keep going. So this is the citrus corner over here. And I was gonna just grow these four bushes over here into one hedge. So when they grow up, they're supposed to get pretty big, but it says you can trim them down and turn them into just one hedge. So I thought that would be pretty cool. It looked like one bush covering the back fence with different kind of citrus fruits on it. So hopefully that turns out good. So over here we got a clementine and it's still stayed pretty small. It's got some um, branches shooting out and everything was filling out really good, but this one here, it just kind of popped out, but some of the leaves just didn't form that good and uh, it just kind of fell off. And these ones are, look kind of weird, but they, they grew up. And same with all these, the new growth is just growing kind of weird, but I think um, that's because it doesn't get as much sun. So I'm not worried about it because come next spring, it's gonna just really take off, I'm sure. But the ones that have been doing good for the citrus, is this Eureka lemon. This one's growing pretty tall. So I'm glad I put it in the middle. And this burr's line behind it. It's uh, growing really good and it's bushy on the bottom. So it's filling out the, the whole bottom there. And this is filling out the top. And the navel orange over here hasn't really done anything. It's just kind of stayed stagnant. But I'm not worried about it because come next spring, I'm sure everything's going to take off. It still looks really good, healthy. So I'm pretty satisfied with the results of everything so far. And this one is my Bartlett pear tree. It's uh, doing really good. And in the previous video, I show little flowers coming out of it. And I tried to pollinate them with my fingers and it had a bunch of flowers everywhere a few of them got pollinated so as you can see here we have some little pears so that's pretty exciting some little pears here it's pretty big so you can see I'm not sure if it's gonna turn out to be anything we got one there one in here somewhere there you go there's another one so there's two in there. And then you got another two hanging out here. So yeah, that's cool. None of my other fruit trees grew fruit, but the pears grew a few. I figured I'd just let it grow, see what it does. And then over here, I got the blueberry bush. It's a high bush, so it's supposed to grow vertical. So that's what it's doing. Gotten pretty tall. And this one over here is a blackberry. It uh, grows these long viney branches and has these leaves in between and it just keeps going and going. It started off real small and over these months, it's just, man, taking off. It's all the way at the bottom now as you can see down there. So I'm gonna have to twist it back up around the trellis. I tried to 
twisted through the trellis as much as I could. Uh, but I'm just gonna have to loop it around like a pretzel or something. So yeah, I even put it over here on the wind chime. Just make it more decorative. So that one's doing really good. Next, we got the Hass Avocado. And I wasn't sure about this one at first because the leaves wilted and everything. When I planted everything, it was kind of warm outside. I got a late start towards the end of spring. So in Sacramento, it gets pretty hot. So everything was kind of wilty at first. But man, once this one took root, it just really took off. I mean, this thing is really, like this is as many leaves as the plant had when I first bought it, just on one branch here. It just keeps going and going. I mean, this growth has started to slow down just a little bit now, but it's getting really big. But I, I guess for winter, you're supposed to cover it because the frost can damage it. So I'm gonna have to buy a big cover now because I don't want this plant to get damaged with all this nice growth it's gotten this year. So hopefully I'll get some nice avocados next year or something. Over here, we got another blueberry bush. I put little name tags in there. So this is a peach sorbet. And um, it's just kind of stayed the same. I. When we first bought it, I got to sample the blueberries. It came with blueberries on it and we all ate it. And then um, took off all the old branches. So they say you should do that to promote growth of the new ones because the new ones uh, are what get the berries for next year. So it's a little thin right now, but um, it's definitely gonna fill in for next year. It's got like a tiny little one here. As you can see, some new growth on the bottom. But that's about it, but that's a good sign. Any new growth is definitely a good sign. So never give up on a plant if it looks like it's dying. As long as it has some new growth, you should be good to go. So this is the raspberry. It's got a little new growth on top, the, or on the bottom, I should say. The other stuff on top over here has actually got some raspberries. So we've been picking these as they've been ripening and everybody that has got to taste it says they really like it. Here's the white one. As you can see, looks a little weird, like a brain or something. And uh, they get darker as you go, as they get ripened. And when they're that really dark color, that's when it, it's time to pick them. You can just take them right off of the flower there. Look, this one's just falling off. But yeah, it just fell right off the flower there. Really good. Let's see here. There you go, see? It's just right off of the flower. Mm. So I got some over here too. So it's true what they say, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. So if you can wait till it gets the darkest, then it's usually at its sweetest. But you know, a little tartness and firmness is good because you let it go too long, then it's gonna get squishy. So yeah, the raspberries kicking butt. Then over here, we got a Rainier cherry tree. I'm not sure if it didn't like the sun that much, but it just, kind of held off growing anything until after the hot summer days kind of went by. Now that it's getting continuously nice weather, it actually is opening up a little bit. We got some buds in there, as you can see. But finally, this is the new growth. Some of these leaves here. But all these old ones I sprayed with the whitewash stuff to help protect it from the summer heat. So it looks kind of funky. So I'm waiting for some new fresh ones so it could help it grow and fill out. But on the bottom, it finally started to grow a new branch and it looks really good. 
but I'm not sure if it's gonna make it look weird or if it's gonna turn into maybe just another uh, stick on the tree, like another trunk. And if it'll just blend in like two trunks in one tree, kind of like you have with the high density uh, tree planting over here. So it might fill in and look cool as two trunks or it might just look like a, a funky branch on the bottom. So since it's uh, new growth and it's actually doing something down here, I figured I would just, you know, let it go, see what happens. And then over here, another blueberry bush. Same thing as that other one, just it grew blueberries and then picked them off, pruned it. And it hasn't really done anything significant to talk about. So we'll go to the next one. This one's a blackberry and a different kind from that other one. This one gets more bushy where the other one gets more viney and less leaves. But um, haven't got any blackberries this year. So I'm not sure if I missed you know, the time that it starts growing them. So uh, everything is my first year here. So I'm surprised I got any fruit at all from any of these, but it's a nice little treat. But yeah, I'll just have to wait next year for those blackberries. They stop growing. Over here, we have two nectarine trees and those were so tiny last time. And they've just really filled out and grown. I haven't really had to prune it. Even though there's two right next to each other. This one's a white nectarine. This one's a red one. And yeah, it's high density uh, tree planting. So you, you just take two trees of the same kind. And you plant them right next to each other. About a foot apart. A little bit more. A foot and a half and you just let them grow side by side and prune them into each other. So it looks like one tree. So, so far it's working out good. It's gotten over the fence here. So yeah, it's kicking butt. That one's a success. Over here, we got two blueberry bushes. These are the high growing ones. So these ones have done pretty good with all the blueberry bushes they all had a little bit of hard time in the 100 plus degree heat that we get in Sacramento so it stumped the growth but they're they hung in there and they're still doing good just not as good as maybe springtime so yeah that's the thing with all the blueberries they're all gonna be like about this for their first year in these pots over here we got the goji bush and I heard about this one on YouTube videos so I heard you can grow them into a tunnel so I figured I would try it I would have never known because I was gonna put a bench right here and have the tunnel growing over the bench so when you sit down you're just covered by tunnel and all this foliage over here the trees the bushes It'd be a cool little hideout spot so yeah, at first this one was just sticks and leaves. You could always see from my video uh, for the summer gardening. You know, when I did, did a tour of back here for the summer, uh, you could see how small everything was before and how big it's gotten. But this one's done pretty good. Again, the summer heat kind of stumped the growth and now it's just really taking off. So yeah, I can't wait. It's gotten over the stake holding it that's how I can measure it so yeah it's been growing about you know an inch every few days or so so anybody can this is one of those experiments you know anybody can try and if it works great if it doesn't you know it doesn't you just try again next year and it gives you something to do next year this one this is my most success right here. This one is the passion fruit. And man, it was just a tiny bush in the beginning. You can see where the old bush is, where all these funky leaves are. Kind of has, you know, the dead parts on it, where the heat kind of got it at first. 
but once it took root, it really just, man, took off. This is my most vigorous grower. This passion fruit right here. Now it's growing over into the neighbor's yard. So I'm gonna have to prune it here. I have no other option. The heads are just growing everywhere. It's out of control a little bit. So yeah, if you want a vigorous grower, grow some passion fruit. If you want to cover the walls, looks nice. And I planted this one last out of all of them and it's uh, overtaken, you know, the other ones, all, everything's done good, but that's definitely by far the most vigorous. This is my cool apple tree. I'm proud of this one because it's grafted with six different varieties of apple. So when it starts getting apples, it's gonna have all these different looking apples on it. You can tell by the leaves that uh, they're different in their own little ways. This one's more short and bushy. This one's long, kind of white fuzzy leaves. These ones are curled, kind of sharp looking leaves. Um, yeah, this one, this one. And it's uh, gotten as tall as the posts that are holding it. Yeah, I was worried it was gonna die when I first put it in here in summer, but now it's, man, it's really taking off. I, uh, Try to use all the tips from other YouTube videos that I've watched. So I use worm castings, chicken manure, um, top grade soil. I even buried uh, sardines underneath there because they say when the, the fish decomposes, <clears throat> it's really healthy for the, the soil. The nutrients go into the soil and the plants absorb all those nutrients. So fish especially are you know, densely nutritious. So yeah, I guess it works because all my plants have been looking good. Um, these are two different pomegranates next to each other. You got white and red. So of course this is the wonderful pomegranate, the red kind. Um, the white one's more sweeter, red one's more tangy. This one's almost as tall as the fence. So yeah, it's unbelievable. The fence is about six feet tall. So just goes to show you how, you know, these things reach for the sky and they keep going, how fast they can go, you know, in just a few months. It's unbelievable. I, couldn't, I can't wait for next spring. Man, every, with all the flowers and everything, it's gonna be more bigger. And then might get some fruit, nice weather, just everything about spring is gonna be really cool and I can't wait. And then over here to finish off the patio area. Oh yeah, by the way, I got fresh cement put in because this is a brand new house when we moved in here. So it was just all dirt before. You can see in the previous video. So yeah, I got the cement put in here. So now when winter comes, I can still come out here, not have to worry about getting dirty or muddy. And all the other stuff I wanted to get, but wouldn't fit back there. And uh, I just put it in a pot. So over here, we got this um, black cherry tree. So this one's actually been doing good. I think cause it got more shade, less, um, less heat from the sun. So. I think it did better than that white cherry over there in the middle, the one I was showing. Um, maybe that's why this one's done better. Not quite sure. But they were both about the same when I first plugged them in. This one over here is my manila mango. So when I first got it, it was about half the size, but it's just been continually growing. Um, you can see from the red leaves that that's the new growth. It's 
kind of cool. It's the only plant that grows like dark red leaves that slowly turn green as they mature and get hard. Otherwise it's just, it's kind of uh, soft and wiggly or you get the hard stuff that's not that wiggly. You know, it's more stiff, you can see it. So that's kind of cool about the mango trees. Come winter, I'm gonna have to cover these or move the pots inside because they're subtropical and they can get damaged from the frost. This is my guava bush and it's just always done good. Actually too good because one of the branches got so heavy that it broke off. It was actually in the top here. It uh, It's split right there, right down the middle. So I, I cut it and then it looked kind of plain on top for a while, but now you got these two parts growing out where I, where I cut it before. So yeah, all you gotta do is just snip it and the nodes underneath will just shoot right out and continue to grow. So if you bit, break big branches off your bushes or anything, no need to worry because they'll grow back, you know. It just shows the, the weaknesses in the plants and it's, it's better if it happens early. So that way the tree can have time to grow new ones and grow into it, you know. Hopefully what doesn't kill it makes it stronger. And over here is my favorite place. We call this one the chill out zone. And it's like a sanctuary for me and it's a haven for the hummingbirds. Now we have hummingbirds back here. So yeah, this place, man, we've slowly added to it. Little thing after little thing. And I think it's about everything we could put in here to make it look nice without it being overwhelming. But man, it is beautiful in here. I love it. As you can see, we got the grapes growing. They've um, had a steady growth, grown real vigorous, but I think fall they start winding down because they, they stop growing, but they were doing really good. They still look really healthy. I think it's just that time of the season where they just stop growing, getting ready to go dormant. They could probably tell from the long days and then up here, this is about where everything stopped. So I made it about halfway, that's what I thought. I thought it actually might go over, but everything just kind of stopped. We uh, hit a heat wave and it kind of stopped these kiwi plants, but the kiwi plants were doing good before. But now you can see they have lost all the leaves. The leaves are just kind of dying. I thought maybe they were just calling it quits for the year, you know, gonna go dormant. But then I started getting these little buds. Man, I, I thought, I mean, look at this, it hit a heat wave and then it just died. And now with the nice weather, it's popping some new leaves. So it's hanging in there. I'm not gonna give up on this kiwi plant. But I hear a lot of people you know, their kiwi plants end up dying and they have to get rid of them. So yeah, you see all these swirls around. That's the kiwi plant. The grapes just grow straight and you gotta weave it in and out of the trellis. So yeah, the kiwi plant, it was going, but it just couldn't take that summer heat and it stopped, but it's hung in there. So I'll see how it goes. Cross my fingers. So yeah, out of all the plants, I would say the kiwi probably took the most damage. Over here, these are all my ornamental plants. Uh, I wanted this to be my purple side of the fence. So these were the uh, lavenders and this big purple shrub and purple ground cover. The one lavender hung in there and the other one decided to kick the bucket so uh, yeah one out of two isn't bad man but this uh purple shrub i think it's called a 
Duranta, but it's something like that. But it's done really good. I had a caterpillar problem, but I just spent like a lot of time combing through it, taking out all the caterpillars, and then I bought some spray, and it worked really good. So now all the leaves have no holes. But as you can see, some older ones do. Some of these older ones have the holes. Yeah, I was looking like Swiss cheese before. But look how much it's grown, you know, since I took out the caterpillars, you, you can barely tell. So yeah, if you get caterpillars and it looks ugly, just give it some time, it'll come back. Anytime the plants lose leaves, it promotes new growth. So you're gonna get it back. This one is the plum tree. The Santa Rosa weeping plum tree. So it's cool, I'm just gonna let it grow really tall because even when it gets fruit and it's so tall I can't reach it, that the leaves are just gonna bend down just like that. And you'll be able to uh, get the fruit that way. That's why it's called weeping because when it gets fruit, everything weeps down. So that's one of my prized trees too because you know, it has like a special kind of attribute to it that most trees don't. So I'd say the weeping plum tree, the uh, apple tree I had out there, and the ones where I was able to plant two next to each other to get a couple different varieties. Yeah, those are my coolest ones. And then we just have the landscape decor we threw in some hidden animals. If you're able to see them. It's kind of cool if, with the frogs hiding, it makes you look for it a little bit more. I thought the statue makes me feel like, you know, more free being an eagle. Like I'm living the American dream kind of remind me of a you know like a like a power of freedom kind of symbol back here a majestic animal so I wanted some kind of statue and I think that went perfect over here we got the half barrel wine full of flowers and this one got ravaged by caterpillars but I just pruned off all the like dead stuff chewed up stuff and I sprayed it with some caterpillar spray and uh, it came back, it looks pretty nice now. And these flowers, actually the hummingbirds love it. So yeah, um, all the other flowers on it have kind of died out for the season. Uh, they are perennials, so they should come back next year. The thing with flowers is they grow, you know, pretty tall, so at nice when they're Kind of small and manageable they look really nice but as they keep getting bigger they start looking all bushy and scraggly so you really just got to keep maintaining it don't worry about cutting off big chunks i mean look these chunks you could cut off and then you get a whole new stem coming out so i did that with all of them and it'll just continue to grow otherwise this would be a big fat thing but instead you get another small looking branch coming in so that really helped with thinning it out, kind of sprucing it up. Got a little uh, late bloomers here. And these ones back here, these ones are gonna look really cool when they grow up and fill out. You got the tree version over here and the vine version over here. So. This vine one is supposed to go up and over. I'm gonna let it go over the fence onto the other side. And uh, this tree is supposed to fill in the rest of the whole corner. And what's nice about this plant is it gets all these pretty little pink flowers, just like this one here. This is the only flower here. So I'm glad I get to show you an example. But uh, yeah, you get those all over the plant, it's just, turns pink everywhere. I think they're called bougainvilleas. So I think I said that right. 
And I can't wait till it gets up and over with all the flowers next spring. This thing has been uh, growing really good too. Uh, we had a lot of wind one day and it was getting flapped around because the stems are kind of thin and everything in here. Uh, and it got knocked over. So the bottom was still full, but the top just was all knocked over and I even had to cut some stuff off because it kind of died out. A lot of leaves fell off. It's looking kind of sad. And then all of a sudden, man, the, it just started getting all these uh, stems shooting up on top everywhere. So it really filled out the top, so I'm glad. These ones droop down and they kind of curl up and these ones are sticking straight up. So it really helped to just fill it out. Um, so that's kind of it for back here. The patio we put in, it's been hanging in there. Doing really nice. Not bad for doing ourselves. Just the cement, we had to call somebody in because I'm not doing that. Leave it up to the pros. But as you can see, we uh, got this light on top too. So at nighttime, we have these uh, multicolored rope light going along the perimeter of the, the fence and then over onto the arbor. Oh man, it really just lights it up back here. Otherwise it's really dark, but now it's the perfect amount of light without being too bright. And it's really decorative, so it just looks nice. I can make it Christmas colors, rainbow, choose individual colors, make it all white so it just looks normal. You could do it, have it do all kinds of patterns, all kinds of things. So yeah, it's really cool. Check it out. There you go. I think he sees me. He's waiting for the clear. Checking out the scene. It's all good, little guy. Go for it. That's what I put the food out for you for. There you go. Like I said, Hummingbird Haven. They all kind of stop back here as a fuel stop. So I've seen a few of them so far. At first it was only one, but I think he told his baby mama. And then the word got out to his other friends. Then they started bragging. So hopefully all kinds of hummingbirds will be back here. But we do see them quite often. At first, the hummingbird feeder wasn't working. It seemed like all the liquid was just evaporating, but I put it out here in the corner where it wasn't in the sun. Now the liquid just stays there, and the hummingbirds found it. And I think I put it in a good spot. It goes, you know, with the scenery too. Has the patience, they'll find it. Once they find it, they'll keep coming back. Because they're back all the time now over here. So that concludes our uh, tour of the garden. And yeah, this is like my sanctuary. This is my hobby, what I really like enjoying doing. And yeah, now that I'm kind of done with the plants for the season, I'm glad the hummingbirds have moved in. It really gives me something to do. I'll just sit back here, enjoying the day, watching the birds, watching the plants grow. Listening to the wind, smelling the fresh breeze. <sighs> Listening to the cars and the planes too, but you know, that's a part of being in the city. So yeah, tune in again next time. I'll try to do a quarterly update of uh, the garden. So next one will be winter and we'll see how it looks then. But I really appreciate if you guys watch this much and 
tune in next time. Peace. You helping daddy mulch? Yeah, you just throw down the leaves. There you go. Yeah, we're just throwing out the leaves. And go back in to the soil for the plants to soak up. So it's an interactive experience. Wee.